get electrocuted up here. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was good. Good worship. Woo! It just keeps flowing each service. It just keeps carrying over to the next service and the next service. That's what we want, right? We come to church to step into his presence. So he is so, so good. So thank you for the worship team. You guys are amazing. They are amazing. They work so hard. And there's one other person I wanted to mention this morning that works very, very hard. And a lot of you guys don't know this because if you don't have children, you wouldn't know this. But Nancy Anderson, stand up. Come on, girl. <laughs> Nancy has been just so faithful in making sure our kids are taken care of. And, you know, for many of the churches all around, it, for the child care area you know we don't have as many workers and it's a struggle it's been a little harder to open all the way up for our children but she has been very faithful and when you know people can't be here she steps in and so i just want to say thank you yeah. thank you thank you thank you she's been a blessing blessing to us to the church and we can't do this without people that have such servant hearts because we're all in this together Amen. so i just wanted to just point you out and let everybody know just what a blessing you are so thank you yeah. so anyway so god laid this word on my heart y'all and when he laid it on my heart well the title is called offense proof and so we're going to talk about offense proofing our life and not allowing ourselves to walk offended and um when god laid this on my heart i'm like really <laughs> really you want me to talk about not being offended because I don't want to offend everybody <laughs> but um and just so you know when I'm talking today these are just the things that God's put in my spirit it's not about any of you because sometimes you know when you're sitting out there I know what's happened to me and the pastor's preaching you're thinking oh they're reading my mail they're talking about me no, I'm not talking about any person. I'm talking about really our world, the state of our world. People are offended so much today. We are seeing offense ramp up like we've never seen before. We are seeing a world that is angry, a world that has become more hateful, and just a world that just gets offended about everything. And we're afraid at times to say anything. We're afraid, oh, the lashback we're going to get. But see, wouldn't it just be like the devil? That he brings people through what we've come through in 2020. He brings us through fear. And then what does he do? He gets us isolated. And then he throws a bunch of offense at us. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's a smart character. But see, we can be smarter. We can be wiser. But offense is a breeding ground for deception and today i feel like this is such a an important word because if we do not guard the offense in our life we will be deceived because offense is dangerous becoming offended is dangerous and we all struggle with it we all deal with it but the word offense comes from the greek word called scandalon a scandalon was part of the animal trap that held the bait its purpose was to lure its victim. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that what the enemy's trying to do to each one of us in here today and online? He's trying to lure us into being offended. He's trying to lure us and cause us to be angry and mad and disgruntled about everything. It really is a temptation. Every opportunity that comes our way to be offended is a temptation. And we choose if we're going to buy into it. Or if we're going to push it away. See, offense is that bait that lures us into a trap of full-blown bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. We all struggle with this. We all deal with this. But we have to make up our minds now, ahead of time. Because the offense is going to come. You can walk out these doors. Well, you may not even get out of these doors and get offended by somebody. You may pull onto the road and then get offended by somebody. Offense is right in our face every day. You have to choose. Am I going to bite that apple? And I'm going to swallow that? We have to decide today. You have a choice. We have a choice to allow it to take root or not. 
So I'm going to pray. Let's just pray. I know we've been praying, but Father God, I just thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to serve your word this morning. God, I pray that each one of us, that we won't look around to anyone else, God, but we will look to you and allow you to speak to us. God, I pray that where we've allowed offense to come into our lives, God, that we will give it back to you. We will lay it at your feet. We will trust you. And I pray for some that healing down deep transpires this morning, that your healing power just brings up all the stuff that we've been shoving down. And God, we can be free this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So. I know you guys have heard it, but the best time to forgive someone is now. It's the best time. The best time. Some of you are saying, well, yeah, I, I should have forgave somebody a long time ago, but now's a new day. You can forgive someone today. You can forgive someone, and that is a wise choice. It's not an easy choice. It's never an easy choice to forgive someone. But the best time for most of us to take care of a problem is when it happens immediately. And so many of us, we just sit on the problem. We sit on the issue and we let it fester and stir in our lives. And then it becomes huge, becomes bigger. Then it's much, much harder to let go of that offense. But see, Satan is setting us all up to get upset. He is setting us up so good. But we have to see beyond that. We have to know that we are smarter because we have the mind of Christ. Or at least we should. And if you don't, open the word of God and start getting the mind of Christ, start thinking his way. So when the enemy sends that, the darts and sends all those thoughts, you can combat it by the word of God. Amen? So we don't have to fall into his trap. We can be offense proof. In other words, when someone gives you that offense, you can decide if you're going to take it. But see, Peter told us that we had to be sober. And we have to have our guard up. So what does that mean? Let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8. Take notes because we're going to go through some stuff. We're going to do a little teaching today. So 1 Peter 5, 8 says this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. He's trying to devour us. We have to see through his schemes. Listen to how the Message Bible says it in 1 Peter 5, 8. Yeah, 5, 8 says, well, through 11. But anyway, keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plugged into these, plunged into these hard times. We're all plunged into these hard times together. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, I love that, will have you put together and on your feet for good, he gets the last word, yes, he does. I love that. I love that. I love how the Message Bible says that. See, we have to keep a cool head in these days. And we're seeing a whole lot of people, Christian and non-Christian, not keeping a cool head. But see, for God's people, he's given us his power, given us our, his spirit, given us his strength. We, if we're walking in his spirit, can keep a cool head. But let me tell you, the minute you start walking in the flesh, we've talked about it a lot. What do you do? You don't keep a cool head. I don't keep a cool head. But see, the word of God is teaching us to be wise and to see that. See, because the enemy is poised to pounce on you. Oh, he's, he's just waiting. He's just waiting because he doesn't want you to gain ground in the spirit. He doesn't want you to walk in victory. We got to keep a firm grip on faith. Firm grip on faith. See, Jesus told us it was going to be this way. It's not a big surprise. He told us that in the last days that people would be offended. And we are seeing those growing pains. We're seeing the birth pains right now as we get closer, closer to the end of times and going into the tribulation. And we're seeing offense like crazy. It was prophesied. 
So don't be surprised. Be like, oh, good. Jesus is coming back soon. People are going cray cray. People are getting offended all over the place. Jesus must be on his way soon. I don't know if it's next week. I don't know if it's next year. I don't know if it's in 10 years, y'all, because our timeline is a little different than God's, but he's coming back. He's coming back soon. Matthew 24, 4 says this. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you because the enemy is trying to deceive us big time. Matthew 24, 10 says, and then many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert him whom they ought to trust and obey. Oh, aren't we seeing that? And will stumble and fall away and betray one another and pursue another with hatred. That is the scheme of this world. That is the scheme of this world. See, many will be offended. Many are going to be offended. You're not alone. You don't struggle with it all by yourself. But it's, it's the spirit of this age. It's the spirit of the world. And we're vulnerable to offense. As humans, we are vulnerable to this. And that's why God says to keep your guard up. You got to keep your guard up. You keep your guard up by knowing the word of God that empowers us to stand strong. See, we don't want to be vulnerable to this deception in our life because it creates a spirit of offense. It's like a spirit gets on you. It doesn't mean you're possessed. It just means, you know what? You got the spirit on you. You know how you just feel yucky and you're like, oh, it's just this thing. And it starts controlling you and it starts controlling the way you react. It's a spirit of offense. But see, Jesus revealed to us the devil's game plan. So the jig's up. We're wise to it. We know it. But oh my goodness, it's so subtle. It's so subtle. See, I can get offended too, just like you. I struggle with this. I have to constantly guard not getting offended all the time in my life. Because, well, one, you know, you, like, you want everyone to like you, right? But sometimes people just grind on your nerves, not you guys. None of you. But see, we're human. It's natural. And the people can just drive you nuts. And anything to me that seems unjust, oh, that's where I can get offended. If it's unjust, oh, I can get my back up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sounds like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Seeing someone else being mistreated, oh, that's not good. I don't like that stuff. Or when people are just mean-spirited, you just want to smack them upside that head. You're like, be nice to people. You know, it's just those things. It's so hard and it's so hard to not allow yourself to get offended. And when we start allowing that offense to get down deep inside of us, it changes us. And it causes us to think all kinds of thoughts that we shouldn't be thinking about. We're thinking things. We're like, oh, you know, I hope that car just kind of, whoop, you know, yeah, kind of hits in that little dead in there. See, We've got to be wise to what's going on. When someone, we get offended when someone doesn't do things our way. We get offended. When someone hurts us, betrays us, or lies to us, we, we get offended. And they're walking along doing just fine, but we get offended. So we have to quit taking it on ourselves. When we're going through a drive through and the person that's taking our order is rude, we get offended. Or if they give us the wrong order and we're like, well, I'm not going back there no more. We get offended. How about walk in love? How about us as Christians walk in love? Isn't that who Jesus is? God, you know, God's love. Jesus showed love to people. He didn't go around knocking people upside the head. Yes, he did take the tables of the money and, you know, knock, flip those over. But see, Jesus loved people. He loved people. We are called to love even the unlovely. We are called to love people. See, we get offended by what we see going on in our government. Oh, that offends me. I get aggravated. And God forbid if someone has a different opinion than you. Mm -hmm. don't, don't tell me your opinion because my opinion's right. What happened to we can agree to disagree? We can agree to disagree, y'all. It's okay. And even, I, oh my goodness, even in the Christian world. Oh, well, if you don't believe it my way, well, I can't fellowship with you. What? Come on now. Unless you're teaching stuff that's a cult or that is absolutely contrary to the word of God, guess what? 
we can love each other. We can fellowship with each other because we're all part of the body of Christ. We've got to stop getting offended because all it's doing is hurting you. It's not hurting them. It's hurting you. And everybody running around yelling, screaming, being offended about everything. They're not solving nothing. They're only creating havoc and chaos in our world. But we should be different. And it's hard to walk differently. It's hard to walk in love. Oh, it's hard to walk in love. Because we want to lash out. We want to make sure they feel it. Or we hold it in and we shut down. But guess what? You just become more bitter and bitter. And you became a cranky old person. We got to guard this stuff. And see, the thing is, is eventually you feel, you feel good for that moment, don't you? Oh, don't tell me you don't. You feel good when you get to lash out and, oh, yeah, you did me wrong. Oh, you deserved it. We, we love that. Oh, they're not doing so well. Doggone it. You know, we, we're, we can be terrible. <laughs> but then you feel guilty because the love of Christ is in you. You can't get away from the love of Christ. But we've got to guard the offense becoming bitterness in our soul. We've got to guard that. See, unforgiveness is like acid in the container it dwells in. It eats you alive. It eats you alive. And when you become offended, you become that unforgiveness just festers and festers. And it is eating us alive. And that's why I feel like it's such a timely word for us. Because if we do not get a hold of this in our lives, we will live miserable. And it's our choice. It's our choice. See, I have to ask the question, myself the question, have I allowed the things wrong, that have wronged me to consume me, to just keep eating at me and make me miserable, only to weigh me down and affect my life and my relationships? Or can I let it go? And I think we, we decide in our mind, I can't let it go. They did me wrong. I can't let it go. But truth is, you can by the power of God. You can by the power of his spirit. And see, we all love a little revenge because that's justice. But the Bible tells us, do not take revenge because God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And I think that's hard because we want to make sure that person gets paid back. But God is saying, you know what? Vengeance is mine. You let it go. You put the situation at my feet and you trust him. See, nobody's really going to get away with nothing. Sometimes we feel like they do. And sometimes here on this earth, people are getting away. You're like, how do they get away with that? Over and over and over again. You're like, how are they getting away with that? I can't get away with nothing. And they get away with everything, and then they just slide into the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. And you're like, you've been living like a heathen all these days, and I've been trying to, Lord, I'm just trying to do the right thing. And then this person, they just come sliding into the kingdom after living, having fun, living life. And I'm just like, really? You know what? Each of us have our path. And we don't want to judge other people. We got to love people. And we got to be thankful if somebody gives their life to Jesus and they've been hateful their whole life and they give their life to Jesus on their deathbed. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that their life did not go to hell, even though they live like hell on earth. See, forgiveness does not make the person right, but it sets you free. And that's our goal. That's our goal today as Christians to live free in Jesus Christ, not being paralyzed, not being trapped by the enemy, not being controlled by people. Oh my goodness, we let people control our lives. But Psalm 133, 1 and 2 says this, how truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in what? Sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. See, as Christians, it's our goal to walk in unity. It's your calling. We talked about last week as being priest. You got to walk higher. 
We got to come up higher, church. We can't keep walking like the world, talking like the world, acting like the world, and think that we're stepping in as God's children and showing the world something different. Are you showing the world something different or are you just acting like them? That's your choice. That's your choice. And we, you know, and if that person, I, I want to say this, we need to ask forgiveness from people and we have to receive that forgiveness from people. And it's not always easy to do, but some people just won't forgive. Some people won't let it go. You let it go. As far as you go, you give it to God. You put it at the altar. You let him take care of it. And then those people that keep rubbing you the wrong way, you let them sit up in the balcony of your life. You have to have boundaries. And that's the thing. I think sometimes as Christians, we feel like, oh, well, I got to love them. I got to keep you. Well, yes, love someone, but you don't let them keep hurting you. And I think sometimes we just do that. We just kind of feel like, okay, I'm just, I'm, the, you know, just keep hurting me over and over and over. No, God is not looking for you to just be hurt over and over. Hurt will come and we need to respond rightly, but you don't keep putting yourself in a wrong position. See, quit allowing people a seat at your table that are dragging you down. Who's at your table? I know some of you are like, I can't get rid of it. It's my spouse. But, you know, <laughs> that's all I can say to you on that one is just pray. Pray hard and let God deal with your spouse, not you. I think that's part of our problem. We're trying to fix the person or fix our kid or fix our mom or dad or our friend or aunt and uncle. And God's going, no, 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 no. Fix you. Fix you. Let me fix them. You pray for them. So if it's your spouse, don't put them up in the balcony. Keep them at your table and pray. <laughs> Trust God. See, I love that scripture because the devil thinks, well, God wants unity in his people, but I'm going to cause a whole lot of disunity. And that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing disunity. You know, he started the enemy this year, starts a pandemic, and then he starts the riots and the arguing. It's just, it's been amazing. It's been amazing, really, to watch all this unfold and to see God's people rally and start saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, I ain't buying this lie. I ain't buying what the enemy's trying to dish at me. I'm going to stand strong in God because the enemy wants disunity. The enemy wants to break us down. The enemy wants to keep us separated. The enemy wants us to distrust God and go, God, where are you? Why is all that? No, all the more trust God. All the more believe in his promises. All the more know that he is with you. He's with you. See, also many of us picked up some weight during COVID. Emotional weight. Emotional weight. Y'all like, you can tell? <laughs> I, I put on some poundage. No. But no, we all picked up some emotional weight because I think during these months, man, we had to kind of deal with some of our stuff. And if you were stuck in a house, especially with a spouse, you know, some stuff probably came to the surface because <laughs> you weren't busy like you were. So all of a sudden you're like, oh, we got to be together all the time. <laughs> but I think there's good that comes out of that because it shows you the areas you need to work on if you'll allow it, if you'll allow it. We have all, we, we have to see that through all this, we've been set up. We have to see that the enemy is working over time to wear you down, to wear you out. And unfortunately, so many of us can get caught up walking in our emotions every day. And then we got a short wick. When you're walking in your emotions and not in the spirit of God, you have a short wick. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's easy to find the bad in everything and everyone, isn't it? When you're walking around all up in your emotions and all, you know, just feeling, mm, having an attitude, you find everything wrong with everybody and everything. But see, Matthew 7, 3 says this, and why do you look at the speck in your brother or your sister's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? See, we're all so ready to cast judgment. 
for casting judgment. Everybody were like, okay, yeah, Bob, you, you, you got some issues over there, Bob. Bob, you like to play your guitar with your shoes off. <laughs> well, feet stink. See, we walk around with a plank in our own eye and we're pointing out everybody else's issues. We're pointing the finger. Oh, you do this wrong and oh, you do that. And oh, your breath smells. And, you know, we just, we're pointing out all the stuff in everyone else's face and everyone else's life. And all the while, I got this plank in my own stinking eye. And I need to quit pointing at all your issues. And I need to focus on my issues. And that's the problem with our world right now. Our world's walking around pointing at everyone else. You're wrong. You're against me. You're, you're doing this bad. And all the while, they need to go and look. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing that's hurting people? Take the plank or look at the plank in your own eye and quit looking at the speck in other people's eye. We got to get rid of the plank in our own eyes, don't we? I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I'll just leave that there for you to keep looking at. See, we got to stop looking at other people and saying, I'm better than you because I don't do that. Well, there's stuff you do do. Quit doing what you're doing too. You know, we got to quit pointing the finger at everybody. We got to love people. Quit looking at what they're doing and focus on what you're doing. Quit looking at what they have and think, oh, my life is so terrible because I don't have what they have. You know what? They worked hard for it. And if they didn't work hard for it, just be glad they're blessed. We got to quit pointing the finger at other people. When we need to work out on our own stuff, we gotta quit pointing fingers at everyone else. When someone offends you, oh my goodness, go to them privately. We're in a world that wants to just blast people publicly all the time, stop, stop. That is not the way the Bible tells you to do it. We live in a world, well, if you do this, I'm gonna take you to court. What the heck is that? Why is everybody trying to sue everybody and take everyone to court? I mean, that is so wrong. And that's so counter the love of God. Work out your issues amongst yourself. Do it privately and walk in love. That is what distinguishes us as, as, as different people. That is what the world will look at and go, wow, you're different. And believe me, if they act ugly, let them act ugly. Because the egg will be back on their face, not on you. And if they don't change, it's not your fault. Right. And it's not your problem. Exactly you choose the better way. You take the higher way. In Proverbs, God says, one who sows discord, which is conflict, is an abomination, meaning shameful and disgusting. I don't want to be disgusting. I don't want to be shameful to God because I sowed discord. Because I was stirring up issues and stirring up problems. Let's be peacemakers because that's what we're called to be. And it doesn't mean we won't have problems and we won't have ripples and we will, we're people, but deal with it quickly. When you see it going on, make it right as far as you can. See, we're living in a world obsessed with everyone wanting you to know how they feel. Well, I don't need to know everything you feel. You don't need to know everything I feel. Take it to God. Quit running to the internet, quit running to your friends, quit running even to your parents, quit running to your spouse. There's times, I mean, Tim, he's an amazing husband, but there are times when he's just like, you probably just need to go talk to God, not to me. And I'm just like, I want to talk to you about the issue right now. And he's telling me to go talk to God. But you know what? He's telling me truth and he's, he's helping me. And we can help one another in love, right? We speak the truth in love. But see, God should be enough. God should be enough. We're called to be gracious, to let things go, to not continue to push people away because you'll ultimately become very lonely. See, most people also, I've learned, they're not trying to offend you all the time. They're just thoughtless. It's true. Sometimes we take things and they didn't even mean to offend you. Example, and this is silly, but when I was pregnant with our first son, so Andy's getting ready to be what, 29? Yeah, long time ago. So 28, 29 years ago, I was pregnant with our first son. 
And, you know, people give you maternity clothes, and that's a blessing because I didn't want to, I didn't have money to go buy a maternity clothes. So one of the clothes, and why I chose to wear it, I don't know. This lady gave me a red suit. Okay, I'm real pregnant, <laughs> and I wear a red suit to church. And this lady comes up to me, and she's like, oh, you look like a red apple. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. See, on the outside, you're like, oh, well, that's silly, that's funny. But when you've dealt with feeling like you're chunky or overweight, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my gosh, I look terrible. I look fat. You know, and it, it hit a nerve. It hit a nerve. And all of a sudden, I could become very offended with this person when they were just probably being silly. They didn't mean nothing of it. They weren't thinking. They were just making conversation. Wrong conversation, but they're just making conversation. See, at that moment, I had to decide, am I going to let that go in me and be offended? Or am I going to say, you know what? Think the best. She didn't mean nothing. She was just being silly. We have that choice facing us every moment of every day. Every day, you have multiple opportunities, shall we say, to become offended or not. And it's our choice. It's our choice. Proverbs says, a wise person is slow to anger. And this is a word for America. And this is a word for us to be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. Our response as believers is to forgive. That's our response, is to forgive. Je Jesus demonstrated the greatest example of forgiveness when he said, hanging on that cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And let me tell you, so many people running off at the mouth, so many people just making bad accusations and bad judgment calls and, and just living hatefully, they know not what they do because they are being manipulated and controlled by the spirit of this world. But see, we are to be controlled by the spirit of the Lord. So therefore, we are to walk in love. And as God's kids, and you are one of God's kids, you walk in love. Walk in love. Love people when they don't deserve it. Because I know how much Jesus has loved me when I didn't deserve it. And even now, things I do and thoughts I may have, and that God still loves me in the midst of that. Why should I withhold my love from someone else? We got to grow. It's hard. It's hard. But Jesus loves us in our messes, so let's love others in theirs. Another thing is us getting our value from people. And see, when we get our sense of value from people and they don't meet those needs and meet that value in our life, what do we do? We get offended. We get hurt. And see, you've got to know today that you matter to God. Even if other people have made you feel like you don't matter, you don't need to, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. It matters what God thinks. And God thinks you are the best thing going. He created you. You're amazing. He's put stuff in you. And he's even given your, you your weird personalities and your weird quirks. I didn't mean to look at you when I said that, Bob. <laughs> it just happened. You know, I got my own weirdness, you know. But you know, it's what makes us us. And if other people don't appreciate it, well, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Quit looking for your value in other people. Eleanor Roosevelt says this, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, it's good stuff. Offense is like an automatic weapon. Once you pull the trigger, it keeps firing and firing, reminding you over and over and over what that person did. Yeah. We got to guard offense because it will eventually cause chaos and destroy your relationships. See, when we live our lives with attitudes of entitlement, none of you have any of this in here, but pride, unfairness mentality, a victim mentality, seeking respect, or trying to take control, we set ourselves up to be offended all the time. Because people will never, never, never meet all your expectations. They will never meet them. And you will constantly be offended. 
and you will walk in offense. We, as God's kids, need to extend grace. We need to extend mercy to other people. See, it's the, the counter of that. We need to be gentle yet firm. See, sometimes people mistake that and they think, oh, well, if I'm, if I'm gentle and if I'm loving and I'm kind, I'm a doormat. No, you still stand and hold the, the line. You still stand strong and stay firm in what you believe and what are your convictions. No matter what they say, no matter what they believe, but be gentle in it. Be gentle yet firm. We always want to lead people to a place of peace, a place of love, of forgiveness, and hope. You're a hope bringer. You're a hope dealer. I know people, some people dealt with drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stuff, but we are to deal hope to a world that's lost and dying. Man, flip the script on the enemy and start bringing hope. Start bringing love. If your response is something else, you know what? Start working on showing love when you want to slap them. I'm going to just keep loving you, but I want to smack you right now. But I'm going to keep loving you right now because I'm guarding my life. And I want to stand and rest in the peace of God. And I'm not going to let you rob me of my peace. It's your choice. It's my choice. Are you going to stand in peace? Or are you going to step into a fence and live miserably? Yeah, yeah. It's our choice. See, we don't have to let get what comes to us get on the inside of us. That's our choice. And you may be thinking, I, you know, that is hard, hard, hard not to take offense. I understand. But we can refuse to be offended. We really can. You may have to work it out between you and God. Me and God have had some conversations. Like, really, God? Really? You need to deal with this person. Really? You need to deal with this situation do it now. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay. Maybe you need to deal with your attitude right now. But see, God gives us self-control, which is a fruit of the Spirit. And I know some of you are like, well, I really struggle with this whole self-control thing. Well, you know what? We all do. But when we step into God and his presence, we can. We have the ability to walk in self-control. And truth is, though, most of us don't want to walk in self-control. We want to walk in control. Mm -hmm. We want to walk how we want to walk, but we love you, God, but I'm going to act in your way. No, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. And it, you know that by all the casualties you have around you in your life because you've been tripping them up. But what's interesting to me is, you know, we can act like, oh, I can't control this attitude. or I can't control how I reacted here. And you could be yelling at your spouse or yelling at your kids and just let somebody come knocking at your front door and you answer the door. Hello, how are you? Or pick up the phone. Hi, what's going on? Oh, nothing. It's all good. How were you able to control that at that moment? Don't tell me you can't control yourself. You can control yourself when you want to. So we can walk in these things if we choose. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. God's given us these things, and we can walk in them. For some of us, we have to practice them more than others. It's okay. Keep working on it. Keep allowing the Holy Spirit to work on it. As you do, when you're not being kind, you'll know real quick. Oh, I know when I'm being a snippy snot. I know when I'm not acting right to Tim or if I'm acting in a way I know. Be quick to apologize. That's a great way to keep um, offense off of you. Yeah. To immediately, hey man, I'm wrong. I apologize. I'll blame the other person. No, <laughs> don't blame the other person. But God gives us self-control and he gives us the fruits of the spirit. And we can control ourselves with God's help. Some of you keep beating yourself up because you keep feeling like you're messing up, messing up, messing up because you're doing it in your own strength. You're doing it in your own power. And God says, just learn more about me. Put more of my word in you. It will change you. It will transform you. That's why we hear in the Bible all the time to renew our mind because our mind is yucky. <laughs> our mind has old thoughts and ugly thoughts and old ways. But when we learn the word of God, it changes you. It transforms you. And you can deflect the offense off your life. 
The truth is we will never, ever, ever be free from problems if we keep blaming other people. And when we, we blame other people because we don't want to take responsibility for our own selves, and then we get offended because they get upset with us, and it's just this big circle, and it messes our lives up. 1 Corinthians 13.5 says, love is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. That's hard. I like to keep records of wrong. You wronged me. I'm going to hold that against you. Let it go. Let it go. You know, let God deal with them. He can deal with it way better than you can. Because honestly, when we try to deal with it, if that person's mean-spirited, it ain't going to matter anyway. They're just going to laugh at you. And then you're going to be even more miserable. Give it to God. Give it to God. See, we got to let God take our problems. We got to let God be in charge of our life. And we got to let things go. And I heard someone once say, and they were just being real, saying, man, you hear people get up there all the time and say, let it go, let it go. Yeah, but it's a whole nother deal when you have to really let it go. It's hard. I'm like, I get it. I get that it's hard to just say it, let it go. But we have to let it go or it will eat you up and it will consume you and it will control you and you will not move forward in God. So you have to let it go. So I'm going to flip the script here and I'm going to go from us being offended or us causing offense to how we got to be offense proof for the cause of Christ. Because we live in an age, I'm going to wrap this up real quick here. We live in a day and age where it's Christianity that it's not going to, it may not be very popular much longer. And that our faith will be under fire. And we have to determine and we have to decide right now that when people get offended with us because we call Jesus our Lord and Savior and because we believe in the Bible and we believe in his truth, People will not like you and people will get offended with you. Are you going to cave? Are you going to turn from God? See, truth is the gospel message can be offensive to those who are opposed to Jesus. And we're seeing many, many, many people becoming opposed to Jesus. They don't even know why. They don't even know why, but it's just the spirit of the dark one coming on people and if they're not following God, they're just running with the pack. They don't even know why they're mad. They don't even know why they don't like Jesus. They're just condemning it because it's against what they want to do, really. I mean, let's be real. It's because, because your truth is saying what I want to do isn't right. So I don't want your truth because it doesn't work or line up with my reality. And people are becoming offended. You see, Jesus was a rock of offense. Look at 1 Peter 2, 7 through 9. It says this, Therefore, to, who, to you who believe, he is precious. Talking about Jesus. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were appointed. But you, we read this last week, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, today, church, we have to be reminded of who we are and whose we are. And when the onslaught comes from the enemy and when the attacks of people that disagree with what we believe to the core come against us, us. Will you stand strong? Will you trust in your God or will you shrink back? It is time, it is time for us to stand up strong. See, these are the signs of the times. Many will be deceived, even the elect. Boy, even the elect, God, some of God's own special people will choose to turn and walk away. May that not be us. May that not be us. May we stand strong. May we lift high the name of Jesus Christ and say, I will proclaim it though you slay me. I will lift up the name of Jesus though you disagree, but I will love you. I will love you, but I will not deny the truth of the gospel. And that is what we've got to become. 
just convinced at our very core. You have to be convinced because otherwise the offense of the world will call us, cause us to shrink down and shrink back. And that's what the enemy is doing. Oh man, he's doing all he can to defeat God's people. He don't want us to win, but guess what? It's already done. The word already says Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered sin. Jesus was victorious. And so I don't care what the enemy throws at you. You believe God's word above it all. I don't care what the days, the weeks, the years ahead are looking like. And it's going to probably look a little scary at times. But trust in God's word. He will hold you fast. He will hold you strong. He will fill you with his spirit if you keep his word strong in you. Matthew 24, 12 and 13 says this. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. But he who endures to the end will be saved. We will be saved. We will be saved. One day we will meet Jesus in the air. One day we are going to heaven. And don't be deceived. Don't be confused by the love of the great body of people who grow cold. You stay hot for Jesus. You stay on fire for Jesus. And when you start feeling yourself getting a little cold, man, you get in his word. You get into worship. You fire yourself up in his presence. Because I don't want to see one of us shrink back. Man, he's building an army. You're part of the army of God. You are called to rise up in this hour. Will you do it? Or will you get offended? Will you be offending people? Or will you allow the offense of others cause you to shrink back? and give up because sometimes we just want to give up we just want to say forget it i'm tired that's what the enemy wants he wants to grow you weary don't buy it don't buy it the days ahead will have will have many fiery darts shot at us for who we believe in who we represent but stand strong trust god Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, take in the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You can raise. What's the shield of faith? Man, it's the word of God. You just hold that word up and those fiery dots, darts, when they're coming at you, you can just be like, uh-uh. No, I got the word of God. My, the word of God tells me this. I don't care what you're sending my way. The word of God tells me the truth. And those are lies. Don't let offense get inside of you. Don't let offense burn within you. But be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the power of God. Let Him change you. Because if you allow the fiery darts to pierce and penetrate your life, you'll give up. You'll give up. We see it over and over and over and over. People that were once on fire for God, but now they've fallen away. Why? Because they got away from the truth of God and they just fed themselves the lies and they molded over and all the offenses and all the anger and all the bitterness and they let it get such a grip in their lives that they cannot move forward with God no longer. Be wise to that church. Be wise to that. Those of you who are watching online, know that the enemy is here to take you out. To take you down and to mute us. But God's calling us to speak forth his love. Show his love. Speak his truth. And not allow offense to control and consume our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 So before we close here, I just want to I want to pray for all of us. Because I believe this is just a real word. But it's something we're going to have to guard every day of our lives. So everybody, just close your eyes. And as I'm praying, you know... Pray with me. Pray in the spirit. But let's believe that God's going to break off the spirit of offense in our lives. So, Father God, I just pray for every single person in here, every single person that will be watching this, every person that's watching right now. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of offense is broken off of our lives right now. And God, that we will be wise to what the enemy's trying to do in our lives and in our families and in our world. And God, I pray that we will walk in your truth. And God, that where we need to forgive, I pray right now, whoever is listening to this right now and you're saying, that's me, I need to forgive this person. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that they will forgive. 
They will forgive. They will take it to you, God. If they need to go talk to them, they will forgive. God, and I pray that they will rise higher than the issue. They will rise higher than the offense. God, I pray in the days to come, God, that we will trust you like never before. God, that every time offense comes our way, we will choose to push it away. We will choose to love. We will choose to trust you. We will choose to believe in your word and believe in your promises. And we will choose to believe the best in people. God, help us to love. Help us to trust you. And even those that don't deserve it, God, help us to walk in love. Even if it's at a distance, God, may we walk in love. So God, we thank you. We thank you that you're doing a work in us, that you're strengthening us, you are equipping us. God, and I thank you that your people, we will stand strong in the days to come. We won't shrink back and we will not be defeated by the enemy and we will not allow offense to be entertained in our lives no more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, good work. Probably say either oh me or oh my after that one. Uh, yeah, we all need to hear it. So, so um, you just have to apply it now. Apply that. Apply that. Apply that. Because the world is looking for something different, like she said in the very beginning. The world is looking for us to be an example, and that's, that's one of the greatest ways we could be an example. So um, before we leave here today, just a couple of quick announcements here. Number one, if you're giving of your offering, thank you so much. But if you're giving of your offering, we're, now, we're not passing the, the buckets and things right now, but it's in the back. It's on the table right there. In fact, on the corner, I can see it from here. Um, use your envelope if you want to. Checks can be made out to Spirit Word Church or just put SWC. And then we have all these digital ways for you to give as well. And so you can uh, be doing that. And then... Uh, we announced it not too long ago here, but God's Girls is getting ready to rebirth once again. And so, uh, ladies, we have the event Arise coming up for you. And uh, let me tell you, it's just, it's going to be awesome. There's already people signing up online. And so um, get ready to start signing up. You can let us know on a, on a connect card back there that you want to uh, be a part of that or, or sign up um, online. So or on Facebook as well. So lots of different ways for you to connect. And, uh, but we are doing signups because we think there's going to be so many here that it's, it's going to, we may have to cut it off at some point. That would be awesome. So um, also, we are, we are partnering with the uh, Dream Center, the St. Louis Dream Center right now. That's Joyce Meyer's uh, church in the city. They are collecting coats. They kind of do this every year. And this year we thought we'd jump in with them. And so it's coats of any size, coats of any color, coats of any uh, male, female, boy, girl. They do especially push the kids' coats, but all coats are acceptable. They just need to be new or in gently used condition. And you, all you have to do is bring them here. Um, we'll, we'll end this, I think, on November 15th. That's what I see there. And uh, there's a box right around the corner here. Just, just throw them in the box, man. We'll get them down there and um, they will get those out to people right here in St. Louis who are in need. So it's a, it's a really great outreach. Coats. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. I looked in my closet and I'm not kidding you. I'll bet you I have 10 different coats of different, you know, different weights and all that. But I'm like, really? Do I need all that? So Tina and I already brought a bunch in, and and uh, so so clean out your closets and let's let's give to people who don't have anything. And we've got so much. Um, also. On your way out, again, at our Welcome Center, if you're our guest today, we've got a free bag for you. Uh, we're just excited that you're with us. We also have new hoodies and sweatshirts that we're selling, and so you can uh, register, or what is it, uh, order those now. It's kind of a pre-order system, and then we'll get those here in a few weeks. Uh, but we're, we're getting as many as we can uh, to people to order. And then also today, we have our starting line class, and, and um, starting line is something we've been doing now for, for a little while, but it goes for four weeks. It begins today. Um, if for some reason you can't jump in today, it's okay. Just, just maybe plan to come next week, but we do ask you to register for that as well. Now today, if, if you're like, man, I could, I could do that. So it's going to start right after this. Um, if, if you can do that, uh, today, uh, I think we'll have lunch for you. Normally we would. If you re pre-registered, we would have a lunch for you, but we'll figure it out one way or another. Um, maybe somebody else will sacrifice their lunch and give it to you. So uh, whatever. We just encourage you to get the word of God on the inside of you. Starting line is for everyone who is either, either you're new to God or you're in a place where you just need to really like, man, I just need to know some basics. 
of what the Word of God says about Jesus and about what I'm supposed to do at church and how I'm supposed to worship and all those things. Um, I say basics, but I'm telling you, every time that I've done a class like this, and I know Steve Miles would say the same thing, when we do classes like this, God always highlights something. Uh, to us, even though we've been saved for like years and years and years. So it's not only for those beginners. So that class is going to start right after church today, and I hope you can be a part of it. Let me, uh, you know what, go ahead and stand up with me. I'm going to pray over you guys, and what a great day. Has this not been a good day? It's been a good day, and Father God, today, as we get ready to leave here, Lord, a lot has been spoken to us today. God, all the way from yielding of our hearts to surrendering our hearts, God, to um, we're kind of recommitting our lives, Father, even during worship. And now, God, this word of offense, God, it is out there, and, and the enemy is, is real, and he's trying to offend Christians, he's trying to offend the world, he's making it so people don't even like each other. And God, in our own lives, we draw the line in the sand, and we say, today we will not be offended, today we draw the line, we will stand for your word, but like Tina said, we will walk in love. And we will walk in peace. We'll know whose we are. We'll, know, we'll understand our role, God. But let offense just fall off of us. Let us return it to the sender, God. Let us just reject it in the, name of, in the name of Jesus. Excuse me. God, bless your people as we head out here today. Let us have a great week in Jesus' name. You guys are blessed. Have a great day, everyone.